dear Heavenly Father, we come to you giving you all the glory and honor, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful things that you are doing and have done in our life, Lord. Lord, use me as you will today, Lord. Lord, let your will reign in this church. Touch each and every single one from their head to the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, today I'll be coming from um, Daniel, the second chapter, verses 17 and 23. And then we're going to move down to 27 and 28. Daniel, the second chapter, verses 17 and 23, and it says, Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Ezariah, his companions, that they would desire mercy of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellow fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. And he changes the time and the season. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He given wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know and understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth within him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my Father, who has given me wisdom and might and has made it known unto me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. And then we move down to verse 27 and 28, and it says, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king, but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and make it known to King Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. In order to appreciate and understand what God is saying in chapter 2 of the book of Daniel, we have to go back to chapter 1 in the book of Daniel. We, when you look in chapter 1, you have Daniel and his three friends, better known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were stripped of their ancestries and heritage. They were robbed of their history. Their backgrounds and even their names have been changed. They were forced to acculturate into Babylonian society. They had to learn a new language. They had to learn a new culture. And King Nebuchadnezzar had decided they should be invited to the king's table. But Daniel and his three Hebrew boys decided that they would not defile their self. So... They're sitting at the table eating vegetables and drinking water for 10 days, and they were fatter and fairer than ever than their council parts of Babylonia because they took a risk. And when you got God by your side, whenever you risk it all, God is there. Whenever you declare that you will not compromise your integrity, God will reward you. Shadrach. Meshach and Abednego, along with Daniel, they are fatter and fairer than all of the council after 10 days. They came there as slaves, 
but they were elevated to position of prime minister and are now governors in Nebuchadnezzar's Babylonian. But then in chapter 2, something happens. The bottom falls out. Now being threatened, everything they have refused to compromise about is about to fall out underneath them. Here is the story of Nebuchadnezzar as he has a dream. And he calls um, his astrologers and magicians and wise men of the kingdom. And he calls to them and he says, hey, I need you to interpret this dream that I have. And Nebuchadnezzar says to the wise men, I need y'all to do this. I need y'all to interpret this dream. So they said, okay, king, what is the dream so we can interpret it for you? And he said, no, I need you to do it without Y'all interpret it. I need y'all to do it without, I need y'all to do it um, without me knowing, without y'all knowing, without me telling. Thank you. And he, they said, uh, he said, no. And, and they said, well, King, doesn't nobody know? You need to tell us. He said, well, what am I paying you for? Why are y'all around me? Y'all need to tell me what this dream is. And if y'all can't tell me what it is, then I am going to sign a decree and put the wise men and the, and the uh, soothsayers and magicians and everybody to death. Which this includes Daniel. Because in the Bible it says that Daniel was ten times wiser than uh, his wise men. So when Daniel found out about uh, what was going on, Daniel was just, you know, he was, he was the prime minister and now the bottom is about to fall out. He has been given a position of prestige, but now the bottom is about to fall out. Life is going so smoothly for you, and then the bottom is about to fall out. Everything is coming up rosy, but then the bottom is about to fall out. Everything is working out in your favor, but then the bottom falls out. Somebody in here right now can testify that when everything is going your way, and then the bottom falls out. A parent gets sick, and you have to take care of them. You've been working on your job for 20 years, and then they lay you off. You plan to retire, but then you got to take care of your grandkids. You plan for life is, is supposed to be working out for you, but then the bottom falls out. You are looking for this, and then that comes along. God sends you that even though you love God and you go to church and you read your Bible and you do what Christians do, but that doesn't mean the bottom won't fall out. Not every day is going to be a good day. Some days are better than others, but it isn't one thing, it's another thing. When you serve God, it does not mean that the bottom will not fall out. Daniel is in a position with prominence and prestige. And now the man who saved him comes to him and tells him that the uh, Nebuchadnezzar signed this decree that if you cannot interpret this, you're about to die. But it says, and the Bible teaches us, and even Daniel teaches us, this is what he responds when the bottom falls out. Sometimes the problem within ourselves or within our family or within, you, you know, the children Stuff goes, you know, stuff happens. But this is what you need to do, and this is what Daniel teaches us. You have to get down sometimes on your knees and say, God, I need you to fix this right here. I don't know. I'm tired of going to counseling. I'm tired of everything going not the way that it needs to go. But sometimes you got to get down on your knees and say, Lord, I need you to fix this. So Daniel's first response was, Daniel, get, Daniel gives us this with the bottom falls out. Daniel goes and finds Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he says, whatever y'all are doing, y'all need to stop right now. I need you to help pray. That sounds so simple, right? He said, I need you to help me pray. If you can't handle the situation, if prayer is not your first response, it ought to be your next response. And... You know what? Sometimes I find out we are so 
techno savvy. We, we know how to look for the answer on uh, 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 Twitter and Facebook and Wikipedia and stuff. But sometimes you don't need to look on in Facebook. Sometimes you just need to get into your word and you need to get down on your knees and ask God to help you out. Sometimes you just need to find or call on the phone and get some praying saints with you. Somebody who knows how to call on the Lord. You got trouble in your family, you got personal problems, you need to call one of your praying saint friends. I want everybody to know how to call on, a, uh, on, on your friends and stuff, because when I'm in trouble, I, I call on people that I know that can get a word to God. I want everybody who knows how to pray this to call on the name of the Lord. If you pray and you pray right, God hears and answers your prayer. I need somebody here where God has answered your prayers. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. I'm not talking about now I lay me down to sleep and I pray the Lord my soul to keep. That's not the prayer that I'm talking about. I'm talking about your soul is in trouble. Father, I stretch my hands because I can't handle it right now. The medical centers got doctors, but I got God's power. Doctors and pharmacists got medicine, but I have God's power. There is power in prayer. The effectual firm prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Daniel says you got a vested interest in this prayer because if I don't get an answer, all of us are going to get killed. And the Bible said that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego prayed for Daniel. And because Daniel was given by God, the ability to interpret vision, but he could not interpret the dream. He couldn't interpret the dream unless he knew what the dream was. And God gave the answer after his friends prayed. When Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego get off their knees, Daniel had the answer of the interpretation and the dream. So the second response what you need to do after the bottom falls out, what you need to do is Daniel, he gave God praise. After God answered your prayers, don't act like you made it because you went to Wayland Baptist or you went to Texas State. Don't act like you made it because you're smart. Because when God answers your prayers, you got to go back where he answered your prayers and give God praise. You can't worship God quietly, but you can praise God quietly. If, if God has been good to you, if he really has been good to you, you work more than just nodding your head. You ought to do more than just clap your hands. God has opened up doors for you. God has came and rescued you. God has gave you a job that you wasn't qualified for. God has made a way out of no way. Don't come to church and just sit down with your mouth closed. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise. I heard a preacher say, praise is the rent that you pay for the blessing that you're already sitting on. Praise is the rent that you pay for is the blessing that you already enjoy. Somebody in this church today is behind on your rent. God woke you up this morning and you haven't said thank you. You are behind on your rent. God put food on your table and you haven't given him the praise and you're behind or you are in the rears in your rent. Now, now would be a good time to catch up on your praise. Your rent payment, he's been too good to you. Catch up on your rent payment. He gave you a car to drive. Your rent is paid. He gives you family and friends that love you. Catch up on your rent payment. He gives you health and strength. Catch up on your rent payment. You still have your mama and daddy. Catch up on your rent payment. You're still in your right mind. Catch up on your rent payment. Thank you. Hallelujah. The more you bless him, the more you bless him. I want to shout and give God the praise every time he wakes me up. I want to give him thank you every time he does things in my life. 
And if he doesn't do anything, anything else for me today, I can still give him thank you. I can run around this church and give him all the honor and glory for just the things that he has done for me. Somebody can help me testify. It was the Lord that was on my side. Not that I went to college or educated, but it was the Lord, or I done came from a good family, it was the Lord. Because I could have been in jail. I could have been dead and gone, but it was grace. It was so amazing. But listen, I'm not gonna let you just dictate how I praise God. If you really came to praise God, you gotta watch what section you're sitting in. You gotta watch what section you are sitting in in church because not everybody came to worship. Somebody came to just criticize somebody because he said, oh, it don't take all that to praise God. Yes, it does. And I thank God for it. I come to church for my purpose just to give God the praise, just to holler and just say thank you because you've been so good to me. He woke me up this morning. I'm in my right mind. And my mind is stayed on Jesus. And if that upsets you, then you need to go someplace else. Because you need to, or you need to get up and find another section. God has been too good for me. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul shall boast in the Lord. The humble shall bend therefore after and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord and exalt his name. You wouldn't be here where you're at right now if it wasn't for the goodness of God. Lord, God has been so good to me. You've been a crook. You've been a sinner. But there was nothing that you wouldn't do and wouldn't try. But God looked beyond that. And he sent Jesus down to save some of everyone. He told you quiet. Somebody is going to tell you to sit down. Somebody's telling you to sit down, but you got to give all the honor and glory to God right now. I came to shout. I came to tell my story. God has been so good to me. He has brought me from a mighty long way. God kept me when I couldn't keep myself. God made my enemies lay down and leave me alone. There were folks that were trying to talk about me and stab me in my back, but God protected me from them. He made a way out of no way. He guided my footsteps. He will keep you in perfect peace. And if you keep your mind stayed on Jesus, the, the response of what God would do when the bottom falls out, you got to pray, you got to praise, but Daniel did something. He said you got to proclaim the name of the Lord. He got before Nebuchadnezzar, and he told Nebuchadnezzar the dream, and, started, and, and Nebuchadnezzar started giving Daniel the praise. And Daniel said, hold on, wait a minute, time out. No, you don't give me the praise. I'm not taking any credit for this. It was God that you got to give praise to. All the honor and glory belongs to God. If the Lord's been good to you, you don't take credit for it. You give God uh, the glory and proclaim. All the honor and all the glory. There anybody here that got something to be grateful for? You know, I'm grateful for what God has done for me because I could have been, like I said, I could have been dead and gone many years ago. I could have been not in my right mind in, in, in a nursing home, somebody taking care of me, but it was God's grace and mercy. It was God that brought me through. It was God that brought me to Praise Cathedral, to where I am right now. And I give him all the honor and glory. Is there anybody here that gives the Lord the praise? God has done so much for me. He's put you in your right mind. He's opened up doors for you. He's put blessings at your feet. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here know what I'm talking about? I thank God for all the honor and, and glory for what he has done for me.
I have a right to praise. I have a reason to praise. Where God has brought me, I thank him for it. What God has gave it to me, I thank him for it. What God has given me, I praise him for it. And if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I'm done. Thank you.